My name is Julian Schneider, and I am with Harvard Catalyst, and that's their Clinical and Translational Science Center. I am the team lead and the lead data curator for Eagle Eye, which is a discovery system for research objects and resources. And I spent part of the summer evaluating Eagle Eye against the FAIR data principles, which is interesting because we're not a repository in the sense that we contain things. We merely describe things. So we're a metadata repository, more or less, describing things that we then point out to. Um, and I'm assuming that everyone has at least heard of FAIR, because if you haven't, um, you might be living under a rock, but I suspect even people living under a rock have heard about FAIR. Um, they are FAIR data principles, and we use them to evaluate how open and accessible and wonderful d data repositories, uh, metadata is. And as far as Eagle Eye goes, the one thing that you really need to keep in mind is that if you put your stuff in Eagle Eye, it instantly becomes more glamorous. <laughs> Although my video is not playing. <laughs> it's, it's thinking about playing. Um, but needless to say, this is an eagle in a wig. Uh, <laughs> so, um, there we go. There he goes. Yeah. Caw. Um, Advance. There we go. And Eagle Eye was built about eight years ago, and it was aiming at solving this problem in research, which is everyone's problem now, doing more with less, because there's been less funding out there, and people start, need to start collaborating in order to get the resources they need. And so Eagle Eye was created through, through grants, and what it is, it's an open source platform, completely open source. You can build one yourself. It's a data model. It's completely ontology controlled, and all of our resources are ontology controlled. And it's a national network, which means it is a node-based distributed network. So we have, in addition to Harvard nodes, 38 other institutions that have their own node. They control their nodes. They put their stuff in it. But there's a central search that accesses all of them. So you can find anything across the nodes, even though they're individually controlled. And the reason we did this is because a lot of research resources are trapped in the method section of papers. They're in text. You can't find them. Eagle Eye takes those resources, describes them, and gives each one of them a URI, a persistent identifier. These are the sort of things that we describe. Um, mice, equipment, stem cells. And this is the obligatory architecture slide where you have our, our nodes, our central search, the Vivo ISF ontology, which is what our ontology is based out of. We take slices of Vivo ISF and create the Eagle Eye ontology. And then we've got our nodes that are being individually uh, created and worked on. Here we have our two unhappy researchers. Um, this guy has uh, some things he has in deep freeze. He keeps them, he puts them somewhere, but he can't find them again. He also has tossed a lot of it away because uh, they don't need it anymore. And finally, we've got someone who describes her resources, but they're siloed. They, she can't get them out of where she is. And we've got this person who wants that resource, but they don't know it exists. So they create it themselves, they spend a lot of money acquiring it, or they try to find it and they can't because there's not the discovery system that supports that. So Eagle Eye was created to be this kind of freaky uh, symbol in the middle, that's our logo, and we're the intersection between these two now happy researchers. That's the idea. This is my attempt at describing linked data, which I'm not going to bore you with. Uh, now we're getting on to the fun part, which is um, I'm going to ask you what letter I actually assigned to this, to this concept. I evaluated our ontology, the ERO, according to the FAIR principles. So according to me, we do indeed have an ontology that is findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. So if you look at your, look at your papers, what, what letter would this go under? Anybody? If, if, I, have a, if I have a FAIR ontology. This, this concept of my, my 
tool has an ontology that is fair. Yes, that's right. It is I. Who said I? You get an ice cream cone for I. Um, I tried one of those. They're really gross, but they won't kill you. Um, yeah, I ate it yesterday, so maybe not. Uh, just a fair warning. This is an easy one. All of our records have provenance. We capture when it was created, who created it, if it was modified, the date it was modified, and who modified it. So if I've evaluated my tool and said, oh, we actually keep provenance of our metadata or data, what's the letter? R? Yes, you are right. So let's take an R and go for a ride. All right, enough of that. Uh, <laughs> now, in this one, I look at my record, and this is a record of a stem cell, and it's got the URI directly in the record, and this is, if you're accessing it, directly from the URI of the item. So it's not only the URI in the, in the HTTP window up here, it's in the record itself. Now, if I look at it from my search interface, it says URI equals up here, but it also has a cite the resource button, which if you click, gives you, and, and automatically copies to your text, uh, text file, the URI of the record. So there's two ways you can get it from the search. And then if you go to the RDF version of our record, it's also in there. So if every form of the record that we have directly uh, gives access to the URI for the record, what do you think that's going to be? So we've got several forms of the record. All of them have the URI as part of the metadata. It is, but that's findable. Yes. See, this is what's fuzzy about, about FAIR as I, as I went through this. It's, it actually put me into some spirals, and it wasn't like fun Ted Haberman metadata spirals. It was creepy clown spirals that I did, couldn't get out of because it's kind of fuzzy. So for F, yeah, I did bring props. Would you like to come up and do a feat of strength? <laughs> it's got a hammer. Here you go. All right. Can you ring the bell? Let's see. No. <laughs> no? Oh, you did. Fantastic. Because if you don't ring the bell, there is an option on here that says you have to yodel, so be careful. <laughs> this is actually a shots game. I did not bring the glass. <laughs> Maybe later in the poster session we'll, get, we'll break this out. <laughs> so this is another fairly easy one. This is the interface for our editing suite called Suite. Um, it's the dashboard that lets you enter records or access records in your node of Eagle Eye. So you have to create um, some credentials so that you don't have people that you don't want getting into your Eagle Eye. And this is only for editing and entering records. So this is the only part that's protected is the stuff you, is the records you put in. And in order to, um, create those, we have an admin page that lets me create um, people who, are, who have accounts and the levels of access. So we do have some levels of access where necessary. So which one's that? Authentication where necessary. Yes, it's accessible. Hmm? Yeah, well, oh no, there's plenty more. Um, yeah, you, it's, uh, how much time do I have? I didn't hit it. Oh, you, you've got a while yet. So, um, so this, the, for this one, I, I decided to do animals because stuffed animals are part of every fair. And because I'm in the medical field, this actually happens to be a um, giant virus. It's the syphilis pox. So I just thought I'd throw it and somebody can throw it back to me. So we'll just have an animal toss. A was a hard one. Yes. 
All right. Um, this is a real basic one. Every single thing in our, in our repository has a permanent URI. Everything. Findable, yes, that is findable. Anybody, feed a string? Want to try out, do you dare to, try, to fail and have to yodel? No, you're all, you're all looking scared. Okay, I'll do it. Oh, I did it, yes, no yodeling. Um, now this one, I don't know if you can see it, but this is our record in OBO Foundry. So this is the metadata for our ontology. And this thing says license, and it, <laughs> it's a large red thing that says not entered. And that's because we failed this one. Um, we think we have a license. We think they got a license when they first created Eagle Eye, but I've only been with Eagle Eye two years, and we can't figure out if it was assigned and where that information is. <laughs> so we're redoing it, and we're, we're discussing which one we're going to um, use now. But we ha which, which letter have we failed with having no license for our tool? For our tool? R, yes, that would be the R. We failed. It's creepy clown. And I won't put you through that again. Um, this one's a sort of interesting one. I, I, this was one I kind of spiraled on. Uh, we have records that are accessible through URI. They're accessible through a Sparkle interface. If you do a Sparkle query, you get RDF. So you do your Sparkle query. You get this table that looks like this that you can then copy and it becomes a URL or it becomes XML. Um, you can create through the XML. This is what it looks like from the Eagle Eye end. Or you could take it and put it in your own tool. This happens to be the Harvard Catalyst website, which has nothing to do, um, so to speak, with Eagle Eye. They're not connected in any way. But Eagle Eye runs the core facility search database. So the database is just a front. All that data comes from Eagle Eye so that when I update the core information in Eagle Eye, it instantaneously uh, updates it in our core facilities website. And so it just pulls that Eagle Eye data through because it's open. And anyone can do this because Eagle Eye is open. The platform's there. And I gave you that because it was an easy one. And it was also kind of confusing because that covers a lot, right? It covers a lot of accessibility and findability and interoperability. So choosing the letter for some of these got a little bit interesting, like this one. Um, we use linked open data. Our database is RDF. Um, we use its triples. It's open. It uses ontologies that are also open. It's very open. But it is structured. And we, we structure all of our um, resource records with properties that are uh, controlled by an ontology application. So we represent our knowledge with this open, available, shared structure. What would that be? It could be, but it's not what I chose. <laughs> because it could be something else. I, yep. I chose that because it is shared and actually broadly applicable as well. So who, who wants the gross, who, who, who said that? Because I got to get rid of these. I'm not eating them. You're welcome. I have a lot of those. You're all getting them after this is done. I, are you really asking me that? <laughs> I, I would say I'm not sure they're vegan. <laughs> I'll just go. I'll just leave that out there. Uh, this one drove me nuts. Community-based standards. I took one look at this and I'm just like, well, what, what the hell is my community? I'm bioinformatics, informatics, medicine, uh, open repo. What's what, what am I judging this by? And so I pulled some things out of thin air because I still was undecided before this presentation. So I chose uh, disease and gene ontology, which we draw some of our namespaces from for our ontology. Um, we are a part of Vivo. That's super open and great. We conform to W3C standards, but we really fall down here. This is a date standard. Dates 
in Eagle Eye are not formatted. And it drives me nuts. Yeah, and it's because with research resources, a lot of them don't have a temporal aspect to them. And so they didn't do that. It's biting us now because we're uh, spinning up a proof of concept on the Eagle Eye platform using an educational resources ontology, which has been fairly easy to do, except for educational resources are extremely temporal. <laughs> they have beginning, end dates, and we don't have the functionality for that in our uh, user interface, in our search. So that's going to be a big um, overhaul if we do decide to take that beyond proof of concept. So. While we were mostly are good at this, we have a downfall. And what letter are we failing on here? Uh, R. Yes, it is R. Oh, five minutes. OK. So this is basically the concept. Oh, there we go. Scary clown. Fail. Um, I'm going to go past the rest of this. As I, I did every letter, and we mostly did really well. I think the only thing we, uh, what else? We did one, we had one more failure on, um, oh. Registered or indexed. Um, we, we are findable in Google on some of our resource types, but not all of them, and we don't know why. So we're trying to fix that now. So we kind of failed on the indexed. I'm just, there, this is my team. Um, it's the best team in the world. They are so fun. I actually live in Chicago, and I, you know, Harvard's in Boston, so I have to work remotely. And obviously, I'm an extrovert, so that's tough. But they really keep me in the loop, and they keep me going, and they're, they're great. Um, I think we've crashed hip chat a couple times. Um, so like, thank you, team. Um, and thank you guys for sitting through this. And do you have any questions? No, you're all stunned. <laughs> Let me go. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yes, we're being taped, so microphone. Oh, I, or I could give him this. Oh, oh, you'd rather that one? Oh, okay. I was going to ask about the sustainability of the platform and how you meet it, the future, and the how, yeah, how do you make it work for like more than three years after the Oh, event? yeah. Well, Eagle Eye is remarkably stable. Um, it's, we actually have two nodes, new, two new nodes spinning up now, so it's still out there and it's, it's viable. I think, um, it's, it's, sustain, it's sustainable because it is uh, triples. It's, we reuse everything. We reuse namespaces. Um, and it's difficult. The platform's open, but it is not the easiest thing to build because it was back in 2010. I'm looking at possibly putting it into a container to make it easier for everybody. So docker it up or something. But that's, that's something down the road. We don't have resources to do that as of yet. But I think that's why the, it's sustainable. If, was that answering your question, sort of? Yes, we do. And we have been in maintenance mode. So I have 80% I have of one engineer. And, but it works, you know, because it is stable. We don't, it does not break very often. So we're lucky in that sense. You mentioned having provenance information. I'm curious about the granularity of the provenance because that's. Uh, yeah, it's not. We don't go much beyond the, the date and the person. It doesn't really say what changed, but we do have um, we have uh, two text fields that you can keep track of what changed. So you have two you know blocks of text that say I did this and that. And we were pretty good about that. Sometimes when you're in a hurry, you cheat, but yeah, it's not that granular. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is a fun talk. Um, and I'm wondering, thinking about when you were assessing your own systems for fairness, if you encountered any um, challenges or um, kind of inborn um, uh, feelings of being dragged to one way or another because of your background or past projects you've worked on or something, because I have encountered that myself where it's very hard to, it, it, is it yeah. actually meeting the fair standard? So I'd love to hear your perspective on that. Yeah, it was really interesting because again, I've, I, I used to be a metadata librarian for Countway Library and Catalyst had offices. So I watched the start of this, but I wasn't part of it. 
and then you know now I've I've been there two years, and I'm see I'm part of this thing that I watched grow, but I don't really have full institutional memory of it. So I'm kind of a newbie with this, and I'm I like I found out that all of our resources weren't being indexed by Google by doing a search and finding out that wasn't so. We didn't even know that was a problem until I started looking. So I think I, I tried my best to kind of approach it from that newbie perspective. Um, I think the hardest part was really, the, because of the vagueness, you have to establish your own internal standards when doing this, or otherwise you, you just end up walking away because it, it gets frustrating. So I think that that's going to be the interesting part, is um, some consensus on what some of these mean. So yeah, it, nice talk, and, <laughs> and uh, the, the tool is clearly uh, built to be fair. Yeah. The, the, the question I have is whether you've run against, up against sites whose deployment is not fair. They, they yeah. decide their data is incomplete or they don't really want to show their data to other people. So they put up the tool, but they put it behind a firewall or otherwise prevent uh, the data from being uh, right. accessed and reusable. Well, that's what happens when you're open. <laughs> um, yeah, there, there are, we do have some um, private eagle eye nodes out there mm -hmm. um, that institutions really wanted the tool, but they have either you know PPI or PII information they don't want out. To, so they put it behind the firewall and you know what? They, that's fine. Um, I'm, I kind of cheated, and I'm like, this is the Eagle Eye Central, you know, search node. It's it's not the private nodes, and um, I think uh, the New York Stem Cell Association um, used to have us on their website, and they they like took us down, and they said that it's going to be back up after maintenance, but it's been like that for a couple years, and I haven't been able to get an answer as to if they're ever going to put it back up. So sometimes things like that just happen. Yeah. You have to be, <laughs> you, have, you have to have a thick skin when you're doing, with, doing open. <laughs> All right, well, thank you. Um, thank you. Um, thanks for being good sports. And um, I have cards up here if you want them. I, I never remember them, so. <laughs> I remember them this trip if you want one. Um, and if you're interested in talking, leave me your card. So thank you. <laughs>